Welcome to the Selling Leonardo podcast series, where we discuss the infamous Salvatore Mundi painting that was wrongly attributed to Leonardo da Vinci. This painting sold in 2017 for $450.3 million, not only making it the world's most expensive painting ever sold, but also the world's most expensive fake ever sold. In previous episodes, we have covered various aspects of this subject, such as who owned it, how it was restored, and what my own relation to the painting is. If you are wanting to take a deeper dive into the workings of the Salvatore Mundi, then make sure to pick up a copy of my book, Selling Leonardo, The Art World's Greatest Scandal, available now at all major book retailers. Let's get started. We all know the name, and many of us know the myth and legend behind the man, but few know much about Leonardo da Vinci. Even Leonardo's scholars are still piecing together aspects of his life. But what we do know about da Vinci is quite astounding. He was born out of wedlock to a young woman, which by the laws of the time prevented him from acquiring a family name. Leonardo's last name would then come from the town where he was from, called Vinci. Being illegitimate, he also would not be able to go into the trade of his father, who was a notary. Now, this turned out to work quite well for a young Leonardo, as he clearly struggled with some type of attention deficit disorder. So, if he did have to go into the notary trade, he would probably be the world's worst notary. Leonardo also lacked a formal education, and so instead leaned into learning from his own curiosity. In my opinion, it was because of da Vinci's curious nature about literally everything that made him into such a great historical figure. A young Leonardo was fascinated with water from an early age. Spending time playing along streams, he loved looking at how water swirled around the pebbles. Many of his later inventions and paintings would carry this theme of how objects can twirl around. As he got older, Leonardo took part in stage design, as public performances were a regular occurrence at the time, in the Renaissance. In fact, while many people attribute the original invention of the helicopter to Leonardo, the reality is that this invention of his was actually an aerial screw that functioned as a machine to help bring down flying angels for one of these performances. Da Vinci's mind never really turned off while he was alive. He was always pushing through boundaries and creating new realities. Da Vinci would eventually enter Verrocchio's workshop as an artist, and very quickly showed promise as one. We must remember that while Leonardo formally trained as an artist, he had many other passions, such as stage design, building military weapons, and coming up with other contraptions for various uses. He never saw his artwork as being separate from anything else he devoted his time to. Everything he did was done out of his own curiosity for how things worked, or what we would call science today. There were many things that were also collaborative in nature for da Vinci. The Vitruvian Man, for example, possibly the world's most famous drawing, was derived from the works of Vitruvius, an ancient Roman architect who worked forever on finding out how to square the circle. The Vitruvian Man drawing is Leonardo's attempt at finding a way to do this, and it is collaborative in the sense that he worked with Bramante and others on figuring out a way to square the circle. Nothing seemed totally impossible to Leonardo da Vinci.
flaws can be found in everything. But with that being said, Leonardo was a perfectionist. He would oftentimes spend years working and reworking a single painting. His notebooks also showed how busy-minded his work was and how deeply invested he was into finding out the mechanics of the world. That is why with the Salvatore Mundi painting, there is just no way that he was the artist behind its creation. Scholars estimate that this painting was created around the time that da Vinci would have painted The Last Supper, The Mona Lisa, and St. John the Baptist, his final painting. The Salvatore Mundi, when compared to these three other works, is subpar at best. There are many flaws to it, from various specific aspects to its overall presentation. A perfectionist like Leonardo just would simply not have created a mediocre painting such as this one. Leonardo da Vinci was a genius, in the truest sense of the word. And a genius artist would not make a poor painting like the Salvatore Mundi during the height of his career. Towards the end of his life, after suffering at least one, but probably multiple strokes, he continued to spend his time focusing on challenging questions, like how to square the circle. His fascination with swirls of water would also continue to occupy his mind. Da Vinci was a man with a short attention span, but also carried an impressive commitment to detail and perfection. The Salvatore Mundi painting simply does not factor into the mind and ability of Leonardo da Vinci. And so this brings us to the end of episode four of the Selling Leonardo podcast series. If you are wanting to learn more about the Salvatore Mundi painting, pick up a copy of my book, Selling Leonardo, The Art World's Greatest Scandal. And make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date for future episodes. Until next time.